Name the main command present in a following row material. Uh, so I don't know. Okay. So, so far you haven't studied limestone in detail, so we can really skip that one. But even if you do it, that's fine. Hematite was the one that we used in the blast furnace process for the extraction of iron. So if it is used for the extraction of iron, the main compound in it would be iron. In case of limestone, the formula for limestone is CaCO3. Hematite is mainly Fe2O3. So hematite is mainly iron, and this is mainly calcium. So, sir, is this there in the book? Yeah, it's there in the book. Oh, okay. Limestone isn't, but hematite definitely is. In fact, limestone is also a part of that chapter. A so, can you show me it? Yeah, sure. Just a minute. Get back to the book. I'm not gonna erase these words here. These are going to help us. Let's keep them there and right. simply try to scroll to your chapter. Gases in the atmosphere, Dox reactions. <laughs> Finally, the extraction chapter. As soon as we start with this extraction, they talk about some different minerals, then they talk about extracting the metals. They start with the methods of extraction. The first method they discuss are for the elements that are uh, below carbon in the reactivity series, and they start off with this iron. For iron, my bad, sorry. This is the main blast furnace process. And for iron, they talk about the iron ore over here. They also talk about limestone. Well, you would never supposed to learn it from here. So the details that you're going to find would be here. Wait, they don't have the word hematite over here. Exactly, sir, it's not there. No, I just noticed. I always assume the word is over here. Do so you have magnetite over here, not hematite? I sure these are not the old papers because the new papers after 2016 are. So I have no mm. idea. He's the gift. Yeah, you were <clears throat> right in the first place. Hematite is not written over here. Well, I, I always assumed it would be there somewhere, but it isn't. Hmm. It isn't. They simply keep using the word ore all the at all the places, or the iron ore, the high percentage of iron three oxide. But I really don't see the word hematite over here. It must be an old paper. Paper previously, uh, in 2016, beyond 2016, have those words and those. Explanations paper after 2016 really don't have those explanations. Yeah, can't see the word hematite anywhere over here. I was assuming it would be a part of the book, but it isn't. Okay, let's go a little bit back. Maybe it's not this chapter, maybe it's a previous chapter. Just a minute. Yeah. So hematite isn't over here anywhere. Not even here. We have the formula of trust, not for the ore. And now I'm going to see that I won't even be able to find the word hematite in even the reactivity series chapter. You were right in the first place. Yeah, you were right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you were right all along. I don't see the word hematite over here. Anywhere. In the reactivity series chapter or in that chapter. 
Maybe I need to search through the glossary, but I really don't find it in the book. You were right all along. Well, getting back to it, how about working with these reactions? Okay, choose one. I reckon I produce heat. You won't be able to do part two, but you can do the rest. You can do B1, B3, B4, because that was a part of the book. That definitely was part of the book. Okay. I'll first do the fourth one because that's the easiest one. A uh, reaction that forms a DUC agent. Oh, no. no. Do you remember the reducing agent that we used in the extraction of iron? Uh, Remember the main equation for a section of iron is given over here by the name of D. D is in dog. So uh, in that equation, there is an oxidizing agent and there is a reducing agent among the reactants. This is a pretty good hint. You can work, work ahead. It's not the first one. Yes, it is the it's second not. one. So where is the equation for the second one? So sir, the answer is B? Are you... The answer is C. Oh. No, I was thinking about the second reactant. Oh, you were talking about the reactions. Okay, this is the main equation. This one is the oxidizing agent, OA, that is iron two oxide, and carbon monoxide, both are reducing agent, RA. Now the reaction that produces carbon monoxide is this one, because this reaction produces carbon monoxide. So this is C. What about number one and number three? This should be easy. The first one in which we're talking about the reaction that produces the main heat, this is the one I explained on that day. It seems like an old paper. It really contradicts. Let me tell you how. Now, if you look at it, the following equations represent reactions in the blast furnace. You need to talk about which equation does what. Go to your book. As soon as you see this whole diagram, uh, and this diagram talks about different equations, you 
are supposed to go with the oxidation induction for these equations, but that's about it. You're not supposed to do anything else besides it. Why? There's a big hint over here. You're not required to learn the details of the blast furnace. So this comes in contradiction. I think, I'm not sure, but I think these questions are of papers that are from beyond 2016. These papers are seem like that the, they're not from um, 2016 or 17 or 18 or after. Well, if you look at it, this reaction is the burning of fuel, coal in the presence of oxygen. This is the only combustion reaction in the lid. So yeah, this is the reaction that produces heat, burning of fuel, combustion. As far as the decomposition reaction is concerned in number three, a decomposition reaction means to break down a single component into multiple parts one reactant into multiple products. And that's B, B is in boy. The only reaction in which we have a single reactant in producing multiple products. So B. That's what this was about. Now, I wasn't expecting that you answer all of these questions, but I was definitely thinking about four that you'd be able to answer four. Since the oxidation and the reducing agent are a part of the book, remember if I open this page and this is page number uh, 161, at the bottom of this page, this whole portion clearly discusses CO as the reducing agent, Fe2O3 as the oxidizing agent. So it clearly gives you, gives you the idea. Now, since CO is the reducing agent, the reaction that produces CO would be the reaction that produces the reducing agent for us. So on the answer is C. I was only expecting from you that you'd give it this answer. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if you look at it, molten iron part C, Molten iron and other molten substance collect at the bottom of the blast furnace. What is the common name of other molten substance? Now, one, they ask you not to go with the these, these details, but these details are a part of the diagram. If you only if you learn these details from the diagram, you get to know that this is molten flat. If one of them is molten iron, the other one is molten flat. So this must be, this answer on the other page must be flag. Make sense? But what I'm astonished about is the, that the questions are from the diagram, which students are not supposed to memorize. The rest is for aluminum. All these questions are from aluminum. Once we'll do that part, we will be able to solve those questions. When will we do that part? As soon as we're done with electrolysis chapter, you'd automatically understand the electrolysis of aluminum oxide. But sir, I have test tried, so. So can you, you can do one simple part out of it. If, even if you can't understand the whole chapter, you can, Simply try to understand one single page and memorize it for the sake of your test. Because aluminum is one of the most important questions of the chapter. Your teacher is definitely going to pose a question on your test, in your test, about aluminum. See, if I go back, notice that this is entire aluminum question over here. If I go a couple of lines back, this is an entire aluminum question over here they keep coming back to this aluminum diagram in the question. If you want to, if you want me to explain it without explaining the electrolysis chapter, I can. That's fine. Yes, sir. We can do that do separately it. too, just to make sure that you at least take some good marks in the test. 
I'm not yeah. saying that you will be able to grab the whole concept completely. But what I'm saying over here is that even if you grab the concept partially, you'll have an idea about what's happening in the reaction, at least to uh, answer enough questions correctly to get a good grade. Okay, right. so I'm going back to the book and back to the specific page or the part that we skipped. Okay, it's not over here, it's somewhere ahead. Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So metals above carbon in the reactivity series. Now, remember, in case of iron, iron's oxide was reacted with either carbon or you may react it with carbon and oxide. In both the cases, what happens is that it can give us iron and it can give us carbon dioxide. All right, so yeah. even if that happens this way, in both the cases, you're able to get carbon dioxide and iron. So we say that it is capable of uh, reducing iron three oxide into iron, but that was only possible why? Because carbon is more reactive and is on top in the reactivity series. Iron, in comparison, is at bottom and is less reactive. So that's why carbon is capable of displacing iron. But as for the other reactivity series elements go, carbon cannot displace any metal above zinc. Aluminum is one of those metals. So carbon won't be able to displace aluminum. In order to confirm it, I'm going to go back to the reactivity series. Let's take a quick look at the reactivity series. Now, you see carbon right over here. So carbon mm -hmm. is capable of displacing iron. Why? Because iron is at the bottom of carbon. But carbon won't be able to displace any of these. Aluminum, magnesium, calcium, lithium, sodium, potassium. There's lithium missing over here but definitely it gives you the idea that lithium is above carbon on the reactivity series. So carbon won't be able to go with a displacement reaction like this. We need a different method. We definitely need a different method. That's why what we are going to do with these is that we're going to go with a different method and that method is electrolysis. Aluminum is extracted by electrolysis Again, we take the oxide just like we did with iron. That is aluminum oxide, Al2O3. And we take it in a molten form and we dissolve it in another salt called cryolite. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you must be thinking, we are taking aluminum oxide for the purpose of separating aluminum out of it, extracting aluminum out of it. And then we are adding it into another salt by the name of cryolite. What good would that do? Now, the answer lies in a fact over here. And this is a common question in past papers. You are going to get to see that question right after I finish this topic. Now, this is essentially same as the electrolysis of molten aluminum oxide. The cryolite is simply used to make process more economical. How? Aluminum oxide melts over 2000 degrees centigrade. That's a lot of temperature. Means we're going to burn a whole lot of fuel to get to that temperature or to sustain that temperature. But if it is dissolved in molten cryolite, which is actually acting like an impurity over here, the whole process can be carried out at around 1000 degrees centigrade. So that's the half of that temperature. Previously, we're talking about more than 2000, now we're talking about around 1,000. Imagine the amount of energy or the amount of money we are going to save by saving the fuel, right? We don't have to spend on fuel that much. Why? Because you're working at half the temperature now. That's the best part about cryolite. Cryolite decreases the melting point of aluminum oxide being an impurity. 
So take a look at this diagram. This is a big, huge block. The outer portion of the block is actually a steel tank. And we line them with heat resistant bricks because we're going to go at a very high temperature as we have already mentioned. Now the inner lining is made up of carbon which acts as a cathode, an electrode, a negatively charged portion connected to the battery. Then there is a solution of aluminum oxide in molten cryolite. When the process completes, molten aluminum is collected at the bottom. And we dip some specific rods in it, which are actually also made up of carbon, I'll be exact, graphite. Remember graphite was the only non-metal on the planet which was capable of conducting electricity? This is that yeah. graphite. This is actually connected to a battery source. So battery source provides both kind of uh, portions, a positive part and negative part for the current to flow. So these anodes are connected to the positive portion. This lining is actually cathode. This is also made up of graphite, carbon. Graphite itself is made up of carbon. So I hope that clarifies that even if I use the word graphite or I use the word carbon, it pretty much means the same thing. And that is connected to the negative part. Now we have this liquid and we are actually electrocuting this liquid. We are passing electricity through this liquid. This is what electrolysis means. Electro means to pass electricity through substances like solutions like these. And lysis means to break them down. So that means to break down a compound by passing electricity through it. How do we break it down? Take a good look. There is a separate reaction at cathode. There is a separate reaction at anode. Remember this cathode lining? Remember the charge on this cathode lining was negative? So all the positive ions are attracted to it. It's pretty simple of the understanding. Aluminum oxide is made up of Al2O3. If I reverse cross multiply them, it would easily give me the idea that aluminum oxide is made up of Al3 cations and O2 negative anions. Now, cations are the positive ions. Of course, they would get attracted to the negative side of the battery or the electrode. Oxide are negative ions, and of course, they're going to get attracted to the positive side of the electrode. So O2 portions out of it will get attracted to this, or I mean these rods. O2 will get attracted to these rods, right? And any Al3 positive over here will get attracted to this lining lining at the bottom, lining over here, right? Mm -hmm. I hope this is pretty much understandable. Unlike charges attract each other, so the positive part of the battery will attract all the negative charges, the anions, the old um, negative two ions, oxide ions, I mean, and the positive uh, negative part of the battery will attract all the positive ions. And in this case, I mean aluminum ions, Al3 positive ions. So when you look at cathode, the negative part of the battery, all you see are positive ions. For positive ions gather over there. They gain some electrons over there, which is a reduction reaction. And by the gain of their electrons, they are converted into pure aluminum matter. Right? Mm -hmm. And anode, which was the positive part of the battery as mentioned over here, is going to gather as many negative ions around it as it can. The negative ion is oxide ion. This ion actually releases some electrons over there and is converted into oxygen gas over there. Remember, we need two oxide ions to form an oxygen molecule O2 over here, since the reaction should be simple. O negative two should give us O, but it should give us two electrons. Unfortunately, oxygen atom does not exist alone. They react to form a diatomic oxygen molecule. And since there are two atoms in a molecule, we need to multiply the whole equation, the rest of the equation with two in order to get our answer. So we multiply our two over here and two over here in order to balance the whole thing. 
So take a look, we have two oxide ions giving us an oxygen molecule which consists of two atoms, also giving away four electrons. The entire electricity passes through the system because the cathode and anode actually give, uh, cathode gives away its electrons to aluminum ions, anode gets electrons from the oxide ions, so the movement of electrons continues the current or keep the current flowing in the outer circuit. In the inner circuit, we have the ions moving. So of course, inside the solution, there would be all conductivity. Current can easily pass through the solution because the solution is made up of charged particles, ions. This seems simple. Aluminum is made at cathode, oxygen is made at anode, but apart from all of this, take a look, this process requires huge amount of electricity. Why? We keep the battery on that provides the current in this cathode and in this anode all the time for the process to occur. So any metal like aluminum, which is extracted by electrolysis is much more expensive than the one like iron. Why? Iron is produced in a cheap process and a relatively inexpensive process. This process does not require electricity. As you have seen, it may require hot blasts of air, but it does not require electricity. In this case, we don't require any blasts of air. Actually, what we require, and we require it in huge amounts, is electricity. And electricity is not cheap. So that's why the price of aluminum around the world is usually more than iron. The fact that aluminum is more abundant in earth crust than iron is that we can use more aluminum, but the problem with the whole thing is the process that produces aluminum, electrolysis, is more expensive. So iron and other metals can also be extracted by electrolysis, but since the process becomes so expensive, we don't use electrolysis to produce iron. We use blast furnace to produce iron. We only use this process for something like aluminum, where we can't use the blast furnace process. Some metals such as titanium are extracted by heating the compound with a more reactive metal. This is also an expensive method because the more reactive metal itself will have to be extracted by an expensive process first. So it makes gives us the idea that this process is not easy. This process by, uh, what, but what I mean from easy is that definitely it's an expensive process. All right? Yeah. Now, the equation for cathode and the equation for anode is pretty simple. Since aluminum is lost of three electrons, it would gain three electrons to become balanced. Oxygen has two extra electrons. It would give out those extra electrons to become an atom. But since we are taking two oxygen atoms, so a total of four electrons are given out. Those, those two oxygen atoms then react together to form an oxygen molecule. That you already know from the covalent bonding chapter, how two oxygen atoms combine by sharing electrons to form a double covalent bond and to form an oxygen molecule. This actually finishes the topic. Let's practice this topic right away with the help of topical questions. So here you see, you see a much similar diagram. Okay, let's go with yeah. the question. The question is about extraction uses of aluminum. First thing, first, A part, aluminum is extracted from aluminum oxide by electrolysis. We can see a negative electrode, a positive electrode, molten electrolyte, you know what this electrolyte means, anything that can conduct electricity. Well, this really was a mixture. We'll discuss what this mixture was. Then there is a steel tank and at the bottom we collect the molten aluminum. Now, what are the electrodes made up of? What is the negative electrode made up of? What is the positive electrode made up of? Do you remember that? Carbon. Carbon, great. I insist my students that even if you can use the word carbon over here and that would be a correct answer, I still insist to write graphite in bracket. So both of them are actually made up of carbon. 
and both of them is actually, to be exact, graphite. So perfectly good answer. Let's move on to B1. Part B says, part one, explain why the operating temperature would need to be very high if pure aluminum oxide were used as an electrolyte. So the operating temperature would be high because aluminum oxide has a high melting point. Remember? And if I go back, it stays, stays it over here. Aluminum oxide melts over 2000 degrees centigrade. If somebody still asks why, if the examiner wants to, to get the answer out of you, remember, aluminum oxide is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds do have high melting and boiling points. So yeah, aluminum oxide melts over 2000 degrees centigrade. Why? Because it's an ionic compound. That's a perfectly good answer for these two lines. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, describe how this operating temperature is kept low. Uh, with the use of the salt, molten salt. Molten salt. And the name of that salt was? It was uh, a difficult name, right? But I know the spelling. Go ahead. C cry uh, right. O L I T E L I T cryolite. Great. Cryolite is another aluminum salt which is used for uh, keeping the operating temperature low. Very good. Uh, okay. What is cryolite made out of? Uh, the actual formula for cryolite is this cryolite is actually made of sodium, aluminum, and Fluorine. The name that we commonly say is sodium aluminum fluoride. The exact formula, three atoms of sodium, one atom of aluminum, six atoms of fluorine. Yeah. And this molten compound can actually bring the temperature down to half, which reduces a lot of fuel cost. So we take the temperature, which was a little above 2000 degrees centigrade, all the way to around 1000 degrees centigrade. And that's a huge change in terms of fuel. Imagine, I'll, I'll give a daily life example. On one liter of fuel, your car can travel, let's say 20 kilometers, right? If we develop mm -hmm. a new engine and we go with a very good latest up-to-date new model car and the engine is capable of going the double of that distance, yeah, you would actually be saving a lot. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. So uh, something like this occurs over here. For 2000 degrees centigrade, we'll have to burn a lot of coal. For 1,000 degrees centigrade, will definitely burn less coal. Okay? All right. Yeah. So, moving on. All right. So, the ionic acid question on negative electrode, which was uh, the cathode. So, we have that equation. What type of reaction is occurring at negative electrode? Reduction. Very good. This is a two mark question and you need to explain your answer. You get one mark as, as soon as you say reduction, but you get the second mark once you explain it. Uh -huh. um... So as soon as you saw it, how come you knew it was reduction? Remember it from the topic or have the reason in front of you? Remember it from the topic. <laughs> All right, great. Let me tell you something. You see electrons being added to it? Remember the term yeah. oil rig? Yeah. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So you are actually gaining electrons. This whole thing is gaining electrons and becoming this. So gain of electrons, rig, tells us this is reduction. Oh, All right. right? It's pretty yeah. easy. Okay, let me get take you back to the book. The above reaction is reduction because we 
adding electrons to it. The lower reaction is oxidation because we're taking electrons out of it. So loss of electrons, oxidation, gain of electrons, reduction, or another way to remember it, adding electrons to the left of the equation, reduction, adding electrons to the right of the equation, oxidation. Because right means it's a product. It went out of the system, oxidation, loss. Left means we're adding it to the system, which means gain, reduction. Make sense? Yeah. Now, it would make easy for you to remember how that works. Moving on. The waste gases escaping from the electrolysis cell contain carbon dioxide. Describe how the carbon dioxide is formed. Well, this was, wasn't explained exactly at this point over here. That's because this is a question from the electrolysis chapter. In electrolysis chapter, there is one more paragraph to it. It tells us that at anode, which is about this portion, this is an anode, this is an anode, we are producing oxygen gas, right? So this mm -hmm. is the reaction at anode. And the anode itself is made up of carbon. And the whole working temperature is around 1000 degrees centigrade. You know what would happen at this temperature with carbon and oxygen together? C plus O2 gives us CO2. CO2. So what yeah. actually happens is, is that these anodes, these three bars burn away, are converted into carbon dioxide after some time. So for this process, this is also expensive because we need to keep replacing anodes after regular intervals. Anodes can sustain for a few minutes to a very few hours, that's about it. Then we need to replace them. Why? Because at this high temperature, carbon easily reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, a very simple reaction. All right. This, is, uh, this whole thing is written in the electrolysis chapter, not over here. So waste gases have a lot of carbon dioxide. Why? Because the anode is made up of carbon and we produce oxygen and that in order, and a simple reaction occurs. Now part E, aluminum is used to make cans for foods and drinks. Now this is something that is directly from the chapter. You should be able to answer this. So state two properties of aluminum that make it suitable for this use. You should not so, refer to cost. This same question was there in a midterm. Yes, yes. It's actually a pretty common question in both Edexcel and Cambridge. Sir, it can be like malleable and ductile. That can be only one answer to this one. And uh, what else? I'll hold an exam. Um, what else I wrote? I only remember this. Sir. Uh, So wait, let me think. There is one more point over there. Sir, wait, wait. Thinking, uh, what was it? <laughs> um, I know it. You can always take help from the book, that's fine. Um, sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, one thing is definitely malleable and ductile. We can give it this kind of shape that is very important in order for it to be used in this shape. That's the first. Secondly, uh, there actually there are many seconds. Secondly, it's a light metal. This can would not be very heavy. Thirdly, uh, food has or beverages have a lot of acid. Aluminum does not react with those acids. Sir, what it has? It does not react with those acids. The food acid. Oh. Okay, so uh, yeah. you may write 
malleable. Malleable and ductile cannot get you two separate points. So you need to write them in a single point. That is one point. You may use light weight, light density. Both things uh, mean the same thing. But it's better to write corrosion resistant. Or if you don't remember this difficult term, you can write easier term does not react Correct. with oh. <laughs> food acid, all right? Food has many acids. In fact, uh, most of our beverages are actually acid. Name a beverage, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Sprite, 7-Up, name a beverage like that, beat black, beat, beat green, beat orange, uh, beat some red energy drinks, they are mostly acid. And they mm -hmm. react with most of the material uh, that we use uh, trying to make cans out of. Aluminum mm -hmm. has a very good habit that it does not react. So since it does not react or it resists, it actually goes better. All right? All right. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Let's see what we have next. We're done with this. So... Aluminum is extracted from its ore by electrolysis. This is a more expensive process than using blast furnace. Why is a different method used for aluminum? Now, this is the very first thing we started off with. Uh, wait, wait, I know this one. Uh... Oh, uh, sir, because uh, it is like above carbon. Right, it is above carbon in the reactivity series. Using a line saying it's more reactive than carbon, both means the same thing. Both are correct. Okay, let's move on. Part two, state the major reason for the high cost of extracting aluminum. Again, from the because, same topic. Because the process is expensive. Uh, I think you should be direct. Why is the process expensive? Because uh, there is like, um, like more electricity used. Right, there is a huge amount of electricity used which makes the process expensive. Remember, uh, running around the question and pushing the examiner for a second question is never actually answering the question. So you should exactly get to the reason. Don't tell them the process is expensive. Also tell them the process is expensive because of a certain reason and what that reason is. That's a better way to answer the question. All right? Yeah. Okay, so moving on, part E says, Coke used in the blast furnace contains carbon. Carbon is also used in the extraction of aluminum, but for a different purpose. What is this purpose? Now, where in the extraction of aluminum do you see carbon? What is the purpose of carbon? It's on the, like, anodes and cathodes, right? Right. As electrodes, anodes, and cathodes. Very good. So moving on. Equation, it's a simple question of equations. Both the equations are given in the book. I don't think this should be a problem. It's actually yeah. literally copying the equations and putting them over here. Uh -huh. Okay, so I hope you would be do able to do this as soon as you're done with that. Moving on. Okay, next up. This was part of reactivity series or this was a part of this chapter which one was that i think it's reactivity series sorry yeah i think yes. it's reactivity series you're right about that 
actually this whole part A, part B, yeah. this is reactivity series. Okay, also reactivity series. Met metallic uh, bonding actually, metallic bonding. Not even a part of the course. Metallic bonding, metallic bonding, metallic bonding. Not a part of the course. Ah, part C, part one, a very good question. This is exactly, uh, no, yeah, this belongs to reactivity series as well as to this chapter, but the good data is given in this chapter. Okay. Um... Sorry, it can be found really? And uh, no. why? No? That's not what he's asking. You it's only need to suggest why we can found it as a pure material. Not because it's rare. That's not what he's asking. He's asking why. Why can you find copper as a pure material, but not sodium or something else? So try to answer about copper. Okay. Because it's, it has reactive? Perfect. That's a very good answer. Copper can be found as a pure metal because it's one of the least reactive metals on the reactivity series. Don't use the word less. Use the word least because it's the bottom three. Right? Yeah. And bottom yeah. three are the least reactive ones. Least means they don't react. They mostly don't react with anything. Okay. Uh, the same diagram we had in the book. Now they're talking about equations. They didn't even teach the equations. That's a bad thing. Sir, actually in the class also, he's, uh, he's had us like to learn the equation of this uh, process. Then why does the book say you don't have to learn anything about it? They should be yeah. either more clear with the hint or they should simply write the equations. Apart from that, the equation he's asking is not even mentioned in the book. Let me take you back to the book. Okay, this is the blast furnace. You simply have these two equations, reduction equation, and the equation he's asking for is not even a part of the book. Let me tell you which equation he's asking for. He's asking for this, um, sorry, my bad. This would be CO2 plus C gives us two CO. This is the equation he's talking about. And that's not even present in the book. Even if you want to learn it, okay? Where in the book is this equation written? Nowhere. It's not written anywhere in these pages. That's the problem sir, I was you, talking about. Sir, can you tell me all the equations of the process, which is like in the class? You're sure? Print? It yeah, would because... be something like this. I'll actually divide the equations uh, as per the category. The lower part of this has this equation, C plus O2 gives us CO2. And then the central part has the equation, uh, CO2 plus C gives us 2CO. And along with that, we have this Fe2O3 plus 3CO gives us 2SE plus 3CO2. And the top part has two equations, CaCO3 plus, oh, not plus, that would be, but that would give us CaO plus CO2. And finally, last equation is CaO plus SiO2 gives us CaSiO3. And CaSiO3 is what we are calling flag over here. Okay, sir, um, like the equations you gave, what do they exactly ask? Like the first one equation, what they ask this for? is the yeah. equation to produce heat. This equation produces most heat. This equation produces reducing agent for us. That is CO. 
this produces molten iron for us. This is the major reduction equation. This produces slag for us. Also, this equation is a neutralization equation that he was previously talking about. Just, I can ask them either way. Yeah, of course. And this is the decomposition equation. And decomposition, neutralization, um, or producing heat, these are present in different chapters as well. Right. Okay, sorry, done. Done? Yeah. All right. So getting back to the point, uh, which element is produced in this one? Uh, we have discussed it many times. Iron free to iron. Why it gained electron? All right. Mm -hmm. This we have worked with too. All right, so moving on. How molten slag forms in the blast print? That's not even written in the book. This must be an old paper. Main source of iron, hematite. Okay, that is hematite. And that is Fe2O3. That is the name of the iron ore. We have been using the word iron ore for this instead of calling it hematite all along. Okay. This is Al2O3. Carbon. Electrode. Cathode anode liquid. That's an easier way. Electrodes, you may also mention cathode and anode. And you may also write graphite over here. This is something we're already going with, going through, so it should be easier to understand, right? Yeah. It's a, just a different way to put the same question. That's how they cleverly play with words. They ask you in such a different way that you don't come to know either they are asking for the same thing or not. I just talked about this reaction. So I think you can clearly understand the gaseous element and its purpose. Uh -huh. <clears throat> All right. I think it's very easy to answer this question because we already know if there is a simultaneous reduction oxidation reaction, we call it redox. Yeah. So it's pretty easy, it's something we are already done with. So moving on. 
Uh, this one is specifically a reduction equation. Uh, it represents reduction because gain of electron, right? Actually gain of three electrons if I be exact. And here I can be very exact because this equation specifically tells me gain of three electrons. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Substance oxidized carbon is alone. Later on, it gets oxygen. So, of course, carbon gains oxygen. If you want to write loses electrons, that's also fine. In order to form uh, carbon monoxide, carbon loses electrons. Both reasons are fine. This is something we are already done with, so this shouldn't be a problem either, right? Yeah. Good, moving on. How to course, how to course. Yeah, this one is a part of course. Why do we use uh, cryolite in the extraction of aluminum? To reduce the temperature. To but reduce the operating temperature, but you need to be very specific from? From what degree centigrade? Oh, from 2000 to 1000, around 1000. Right. right, from 2000 degree centigrade to 1000 degree centigrade. Always be very specific since you already know quite a good amount of detail about it, right? Mm -hmm. These are again the equations. We're done with those equations, so you know how to put it. Type of reaction, neutralization. I've already gone through this type, and this one was Fe2O3 plus CCO, giving us 2Fe, and this is molten iron, so you can write liquid plus 3CO2, okay? Huh. So we are already familiar <laughs> with it. Can I raise it? Move on. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the common name for this one? We just went through this. Uh, to give you a hint, this. Oh yeah, produce, oh yeah, oh yeah, sir. Uh, that salt. Uh, cryolite? No, this is not it. Let me clarify. The name was cryolite. And the formula, which wasn't written in the book, was this. So that's not definitely it. This is the one I just mentioned as another molten layer along with the molten iron layer. What was the molten layer along with the molten iron layer at the bottom of the blast furnace? Molten slag. So this name is slag. You can remember it from slug. <laughs> Easier way to remember. Slug I hope you've is seen big. the movie Slug. Slug movie. What was the name? There was a very famous animation about Slug. It pretty pretty much imprinted on every uh, kid who watched the movie. Kids do tell me about it all the time. Okay, so this is too much detail. The more they are, you see all the reactions I just gave you. You can see them happening step by step. A, B, C, D, E, right? Reaction mm -hmm. that gives us heat, reaction that is a decomposition, reaction that is neutralization. You'll see all those options, right? Oh, the one that forms a poisonous gas. This is new, but we already know the poisonous gas is carbon monoxide, so this shouldn't be a problem. Neither should be this one, nor should be this one, right? Yeah. Should be easy. And the marking scheme starts. The rest is the marking scheme. Right? This mostly completes the question, but if you still have any, you can ask me. Yeah. 